All right, welcome back. Math 1910, Calc 1. We're in Chapter 3, Section 9. This is the last section in Chapter 3. All right, so we got differentials uh, that we're going to take a look at. And it's really just understanding the concept of the tangent line approximation. So we did a lot of that in Chapter 2. Um, so, you know, some of this is a little bit more review. It's going to be kind of we're writing a little bit different than we did before. So we're going to write things in terms of differentials. Uh, so that means we're going to write things in terms of dy and dx. Um, and we can compare the, you know, the actual versus like a delta y type change. We're going to learn how to uh, estimate the propagated error in the differential. And uh, we can find uh, differentials for different formulas and things like that. So, all right, let's move forward here. So if we have a function f, it's differentiable at point c. All right, this is the equation of the tangent line at c. All right, it's still just point slope. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're just writing it in different notations. So it's y minus f of c equals f prime of c times x minus c. Really still just slope in a different form. So when we solve that for y, all right, and write it in like our tangent line approximation equation, we're going to get y equals f of c plus f prime of c minus x minus c. But guys, if you just remember point slope, that's really... You know, all this piece is here as far as us evaluating it and doing those sort of things, okay? So what are we really going to do? We're going to restrict the values of x to values that are very, very close to c, okay? We're not going to choose c. We're going to get close to c, as close as we can when we start talking about, you know, limits and things like that, right? As we get arbitrarily closer and closer and closer to the value, you know, what was the limit approaching? Same kind of concept here as we do this. So let's do an example. We want to find the tangent line approximation of f of x equals 1 plus sine of x at the point 0, 1. And then we want to use a table to compare, you know, values and see what's going on. All right, so, you know, this is nothing new. We have our point, which is 0, 1. So that's our x1 and our y1, or our, you know, our f of c, uh, or our c and f of c, you know, if we're applying it this way. So first step, we need to take the derivative of f of x, so we should get 0 plus cosine of x for our derivative, right? The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of sine is cosine, all right? And then we're going to substitute in, all right, 0 and 1. So we have to substitute in 0, right? Cosine of 0, we know, is going to be 1, all right? So that's going to be our slope. So f prime of 0 there will be our slope. So we're going to substitute everything in here. So we have y minus f of 0. f of 0 is 1, right? That's our y value. So it's going to be y minus 1 equals f prime of 0, right? So we're going to substitute 0 into cosine like we just said. So cosine of 0 is 1, so our slope is 1. And then x minus x1, our x1, or our c value there, okay? That's our uh, 0, okay? So when we substitute all this in, we're going to get y minus 1 equals 1 times x minus 0. All right, so when we, you know, simplify everything down, all right, and get everything on one side and solve algebraically, we end up with y equals 1 plus x. So that's our tangent line approximation, okay, of the graph of 1 plus sine of x at the point 0, 1. So that's where our tangent line will occur, okay? And then we can substitute values here into the tables just to compare, okay? So as we look, you know, y equals 1 plus x, as we, you know, put values on either side of 0, we're getting closer and closer to 1. You know, same with our original function. If we put in values closer and closer and closer to 0, but not at 0, we're getting closer and closer to 1. So that's why it's called our tangent line approximation. So if we graph the tangent line versus the original function, this is what it's going to look like. All right, so that's our tangent line. Notice the, the y-intercept is at 1, okay, and our slope is of x. So our tangent line approximation is 1 plus x, and our function is 1 plus sine of x, okay? So we can kind of see how those two relate on the graph here. All right, so when we have a tangent line to the graph, okay, of f at the point c, f of c, literally, it's still just point slope. All we've done is written point slope a little differently and moved everything over so that it's in y equals form. That's really all we're doing. A small change in x, okay, to a value c is going to give us a small change in y compared to the original y. So that's really what we're looking for. So when delta x is small, 
The change in y is going to be denoted by delta y, and we're going to approximate it as delta y equals f of c plus delta x minus f of c. So we're going to use this uh, in a little bit to can kind of compare as you know we do delta y versus like a dy dx. Okay, for, so when we take a look at this, we've traditionally used delta x, all right, as dx. That's called the differential of x. So now when we take the derivative just for this section and things like that, and we do differentials, anytime I take the derivative of x, I'm going to write like a dx, okay? If I have something where I'm taking the derivative of y, that's still going to be dy. That's the differential of y. So we just need to understand it's just different nomenclature here. How we're going to write, you know, the differential of x is dx and the differential of y will be dy when we write these out. So if we look at the definition here, it says let y equals f of x represent a function that is differentiable on an open interval containing x. The differential of x denoted by dx is any non-zero real number. The differential of y denoted by dy is. So dy is equal to f prime of x dx. So we can use you know different applications for this. So Delta y means the same thing as saying dy. Delta y also means the same thing as saying f prime of x dx. So, you know, the derivative of x with respect to x. So, like I said, it's just different nomenclature. So let's, you know, let's apply this. So we're going to compare dy and delta y for this example here. So let x or y equals x squared. So let y equals x squared. We want to find dy when x is 1 and dx equals 0 0.01. So that's the first part. And then we want to compare those values with delta y. So remember, finding delta y is a little different. Uh, with delta y equals x equals 1 and delta x equals 0 0.01. All right, so, you know, first job, take the derivative. We have y equals x squared. So we know that the derivative is dy equals 2x dx. Okay, so when we're solving differentials, we write dx. So before, you know, we've kind of uh, not included uh, the dx when we do this sort of thing, okay? So we have 2x, okay, that's our derivative. So that's f prime of x. So when we write it in differential form, we're going to say the dy is f prime of x dx, which means we have to substitute in the value of x into the derivative and multiply it by dx. So we're going to take f prime of 1. So you're going to substitute 1 into the derivative, so you get 2 times 1 there, okay? And then multiply that by 0, 0.01. So we're going to get 2 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.02. So once again, we've, we've evaluated the derivative at 1, okay, and then multiplied it by dx. That's really all we've done, so that's why it's 2 times 0 0.01 equals 0 0.02. So that's the differential of y when we do this. Now, if we use different nomenclature, if we use delta x, still using delta x, right, it's 0 0.01 and the change in y. So remember, delta y in this case is going to be f of x plus delta x minus f of x. So we have to say f of 1 0 0.01, right? Because x is 1, delta x is 0 0.01. So we got to go x plus delta x, so that's where our 1.01 1 .01 is, minus f of x, so f of 1. So we're going to evaluate both of those into the original function. So make sure that we're putting those into the original function. So it's going to be 1.01 .01 squared minus 1 squared, all right, which is 0 0.0201. So we can look at how, you know, using the delta y delta x is versus using the differential is, all right, when we take a look at this. So we can kind of see here, the change in y, so delta y is approximated by the differential of y, which is dy. So we can kind of see where the, the, the different pieces lie, all right? Delta y is the actual change of the function, all right, where dy is kind of just our change compared to the tangent line. So that's where we're getting those differences, okay? So there is a small amount of error that occurs there. So if we take a look, if we have f of x plus delta x, that plus delta x, that's that slight change in x that we do, okay, that creates a small amount of error. 
and we have minus f of x, all right? So that's the actual measured value. So we're taking our difference in our error minus the, the original function. And that's kind of what you see going on right here. All right, and what is that? Our propagated error, that's our change in y, our small delta y uh, value. I want you to think back to when we first started, you know, doing the delta in epsilon approximation. Same kind of concept here, all right? So let's do an estimation of error. So this is like a much more real life uh, type scenario here. Okay, so we have a micrometer sitting here. And uh, so if we measure the radius of a ball bearing, say it's 0 0.7 inches, all right? If the measurement is correct to within a hundredth of an inch, estimate the propagated error of the volume of the ball bearing, okay? So we have to remember the ball bearing is a sphere, so we have to know the volume of a sphere, okay? And then we're gonna check uh, we know the, uh, we're going to check how close it is within point zero 0.01. So that'll be like our delta x or our dx if we use that. Okay, and then the radius is 0.7. So the volume of a sphere, okay, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we have to differentiate that. Okay, so we know the radius is given in the problem as point, 0 0.7. And we know our possible error, right? is back here because we want to be correct within a hundredth of an inch and that means we can be a hundredth of an inch on either side of whatever our value is. So the first thing we need to do to find our volume is differentiate it. So we're going to take dvdr, so the derivative of volume with respect to the radius. So when we do that, we get 4 pi r squared. So we know that delta v is approximately equal to dv. Okay, so when we take that, we're going to multiply both sides, you know, by dr. So dv, right, is going to be 4 pi r squared dr when we substitute this in. Okay, why? Because we have to substitute in dr and we have to substitute in r to find our dv. So when we do that, okay, r is 0 0.7 and we have to substitute r in is what? 0 0.01 for dx and negative 0.01 for dx. So we'll get two different values here as we work through this. So when we substitute that in, we get plus or minus 0 0.06158 cubic inches. So we're doing that because remember the dx changes and we have an error and we can be on either side of that exact value of the radius. So that 0 0.01 is our dr in this case, okay? So the propagated error is about 0 0.06 cubic inches. Now, we want to take the ratio here, all right, of dv over v. So we're relating dv, all right, which is 4 pi r squared dr, to the original function, okay, the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. When we simplify everything down, we get 3 dr over r. So we substitute in our values of 0.7 for r and plus or minus 0 0.01 for dr, all right. So we can calculate this, that it's approximately plus or minus 0 0.0429, and that's our relative error, okay? So our actual to our supposed volume, okay? So that's what really what we're gonna do there, is our differential to the volume. So if we multiply by 100, okay, our percent error is approximately 4.29%. So that's how we calculate the relative error and our percent error uh, using our propagated error. All right, so, you know, just a different table that you need to keep down for notes, uh, how's we write, how we write different differentials. So if we have the differential of C times U, it's really C DU. If we have the derivative of U plus or minus V, it's DU plus or minus DV, okay? And if we have a product rule, the derivative, all right, so it's still first times the derivative of the second, so it's U DV, plus VDU, first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then we have the quotient rule. The quotient rule still holds true. Low D high minus high D low, all over low low. So that's why it's VDU minus UDV all over V squared. All stuff that we learned back in chapter two. Okay, nothing really new there. Uh, just knowing that when we're gonna use it, we're gonna write the differential, all right? So instead of saying, you know, like y prime or that sort of thing, or f of x prime, we're writing du and dv or those sort of things, or dx, all right? So let's take a look here. If we want to write things as differentials. So 
If we look at example A, we have y equals x squared. That's the original function, all right? So if we take the differential, okay, on both sides, right? We're really just doing implicit differentiation for the most part when we're carrying through the dx. So dy equals 2x dx, and then we solve for dy over dx, so we're left with 2x. Okay, that's really all it is. Or we can write it as dy equals 2x dx. So the difference between looking at the derivative and the differential is when we take the derivative, we're just writing the dx and we're keeping it next to all the x terms. Okay, so if we look at the second equation, we have y equals square root of x, which is x to the one half. We've done all these derivatives, uh, but we can notice how we go back and forth between the derivative and the differential. So I'm not going to go through each one of these. It's really just saying, all right, we're, instead of saying like y prime equals you know such and such, we're going to say dy and over dx when we differentiate. And then we solve it for dy. The differential is really just saying dy equals. All right, it's just one step away from the derivative. So if we take a look at this, okay, this is the Leibniz notation, all right? So this is how a lot of people, you know, the most commonly written way uh, for uh, calculus and things like that. Also, it's uh, how you're going to write everything in differential equations and things like that. So those of you guys that go into the more advanced forms of math, okay? So if we want to do, you know, differentials, okay, and we want to use approximate function values, we're going to use this formula here. F of x plus delta x is approximately f of x plus dy, or we can say it's f of x plus f prime of x dx. All just using different nomenclature before we do this. Just kind of like how delta y was f of x plus delta x minus f of x. Okay, that's the same thing as saying dy. Okay, the whole purpose though is to choose the formula that's easiest. Okay, and it's just for, you know, choose which one is ever easiest for uh, making your calculation uh, much easier. So here's an example we're going to do. All right, we want to use differentiation or differentials to approximate the square root of 16.5. Okay, so we want to be able to use this. Now, the parent function for this is square root of x, right? So f of x equals the square root of x. That's the parent graph for this. So if we want to use, you know, a differential here, we know that that's f plus, or f of x plus delta x, okay, so we can write that, or we can say that it's f of x plus f prime of x dx. So we can write this out as the square root of x plus 1 over 2 times the square root of x, all right? So that's our f prime of x. Remember, uh, when we have a square root function, we write that as x to the 1 half, all right, so that's why our derivative works out the way it does. So now we have to define what's x and what's dx based on this problem. So if we define that, we can say that x will be the 16 and our dx will be the 0.5. So now we can say, all right, substituting into our differential, we can say we have the square root of 16 plus one over two times the square root of 16 times 0 0.5. So we're substituting back in to the differential function here, okay? So when we do that, we end up getting four plus one eighth times a half, so we have four plus a sixteenth, okay? Which gives us 4.0625. All done way before the years of calculators and things like that. All right, so if we wanna use the tangent line approximation of f of x equals the square root of x at x equals 16, all right? This is what we would have done, right? You would have taken the uh, the square root of 16, that's our x, and gotten our y value of 4, okay? And then used point slope, so we took the derivative of the function, substituted in an x, that gives us our m, so we had our slope, and then we substitute into the point slope, right? y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right, substituting all that in, we get the tangent line approximation of 1 8th x plus 2. All right, and we can see, you know, based on the graphs, we have the square root of x function, and we have the tangent line to that at 16, okay, is 1 8 x plus 2. All right, guys, well, that's the end of this lecture. That's the end of chapter 3. I'm going to do more uh, problems in class, so make sure that we're following along 
uh, with the streaming video and things like that as well. This is just to kind of give you a good introduction, understand it, uh, we'll solidify our knowledge in class and things like that. All right, guys, if you got a question, email me. Let me know if we need a team meet, Zoom meet, else. All right, I'll see you guys in class. Take care. Have a great day.